Today I'm going to be going over the differences between DSLRs and mirrorless cameras. For the mirrorless camera, we have the Sony a7 IV with a 51.2 lens. And for the DSLR, I have the Canon 5D Mark IV with a 51.2 lens. Some people are going to yell at me for exposing the mirror on that, but this is for, for educational purposes. <laughs> DSLR stand for digital single lens reflex. Now how these cameras work is imagine the lens is on the camera without the lens cap. So light is coming in through the lens and then if you look closely inside this camera you'll see an angled mirror. Now the light goes through the lens, it hits the mirror and it travels up to the optical viewfinder. So you know when you like look through the camera and in this area down over here. So basically it shows you what the lens is looking at. So this is a true optical path. There's no digital processing. Also fine in DSLRs are pentamers and pentaprisms and they have the exact same job. They basically reflect the light coming through the lens to make sure that what you see through your viewfinder is the right way around. So we actually have a mirror system inside this camera and it makes it heavier, it makes it a bit bulkier. So that's basically how DSLRs work. Again, the mirror system. I'll just say the mirror system. It's a bit more complicated than that, but essentially we have the mirror and we're not supposed to uh, have it exposed, but I'm doing it for educational purposes. So let's put the lens back on this, shall we? You don't want dust going in there. And DSLRs also have a reflex mirror which bounces light up. To, you know, it's, it's, a whole, it's a whole system in here essentially. With mirrorless cameras, it's in the name. They don't have that mirror system. So when you take a photo, the light goes through the lens and then straight onto the sensor to be processed. And then that image is displayed on the back of the monitor. So this has a monitor in the back, the image will appear here or in the EVF, which is the electronic viewfinder, which is different than the optical viewfinders found on DSLRs. So basically they just took out that whole mirror system in the DSLRs. So when that happened, the cameras got lighter because they don't, you don't need to have that whole system in there. So now we have a lighter, more compact system on our hands, which is mirrorless. Mirrorless cameras use an electronic viewfinder versus DSLRs, which use an optical viewfinder. So the simplest way that I can explain this is when I look through the viewfinder on the DSLRs, I'm seeing exactly what I would see in real life. Think about, it's like you're looking through a window. This is pretty much it. So if it's dark outside and you look through this, it's gonna be dark on here. So no matter the settings you choose, like I can make this the brightest setting possible, but it will always be what you see in real life looking through the viewfinder. Keep that in mind. This uses an electronic viewfinder. So the best way I can kind of describe this is it uses digital processing. So what you see on the back of your camera is not what you would see in real life. There's processing, there's like, think about, uh, there's like adjustments. So there's like exposure added to it. If you add a filter in camera, it'll show you it with the filter. So you're not actually seeing what you would see in real life, you're seeing the final outcome based on your settings that you choose in this camera. This is just all digital based. So think of it like looking through an iPhone screen. That's basically it. Like you're not seeing real life, you're seeing it through the screen. Another example, if you have like a filter set in this camera, like you chose like a black and white filter, every time you look through the viewfinder, you will see it in black and white. So it basically just applies all of your settings into whatever you're seeing. Something like this would be really great if you're someone who wants to see the settings and how they will affect your picture before you take the picture. This shows you exactly what you're looking at in real time versus this shows you all of your settings, all of the filters applied to it already on a digital screen. I hope I explained that simply. It, it does get kind of confusing, but just think about it. You're looking through an iPhone screen you're looking through a window. If you were to ask me which I prefer, the EVF or the optical viewfinder, I'm used to the optical viewfinder. I like to see what I see in real time, but I have to acknowledge the like helpfulness and the benefit of having an electronic viewfinder because if you're shooting super quick 
and you don't have time to always do a test shot, then you would want something like this, especially if you're shooting weddings and you wanna make sure that the pictures are not underexposed. Again, having to sit there and do test shots and adjust the settings and take another shot, it can be annoying. So definitely EVF is great. One thing I will say is in certain lighting conditions, it can be kind of hard to see through the EVF. Like I was shooting when it was, re it was really bright sunlight and I could barely see the back of the screen or the electronic viewfinder. I was like looking at it and I'm like, I can barely see anything. I can't even see the picture to be honest with you. <laughs> My only concern so far is shooting in direct sun. It's kind of hard to see in the EVF, like the electronic viewfinder, even the back of the camera especially shooting backlit, you can barely kind of see it. But versus this, like I can see at all times, unless it's like actually dark outside. Also another thing to mention, the EVF quality tends to decrease in low light situations. So shooting on the DSLRs and looking through the optical viewfinder is actually gonna be better in low light situations. Holding these two, it's, I wouldn't say there's a huge weight difference. This, this one, the mirrorless actually seems a little bit heavier in my opinion. So to me, honestly, the weight, you know, everyone's always talking about, oh, it's more lightweight, but really the lenses are still heavy. So to me, there's not, it's not like a huge selling point because to me, it's still heavy. I'm still getting arthritis. That's it. <laughs> a very important thing to consider is image quality how are the pictures different between both cameras? And that's something that is probably like number one on my list. I did a photo shoot using both of these cameras, same lenses, same lighting, same model, everything. And I'll show you guys those photos side by side so you can see the differences. It's important to mention that yes, I am comparing Sony to Canon. We are gonna have some differences obviously in the colors and everything, but as someone who wants to eventually upgrade to mirrorless, I don't know if I'm gonna be staying with Canon. I might wanna to switch to Sony. So maybe this will actually help you guys to see the difference even between like different camera bodies. I would say the mirrorless cameras take super sharp, crispy images, and then DSLR photos are a bit softer, more true to color. It's just, it's that softness from the DSLR. From the mirrorless cameras that I've used, they're always like super sharp, they're like perfect. So if you want, if you're looking for that type of image quality, you want like perfection, mirrorless, I mean, it's great. If you're someone like me, I kind of don't want the pictures to be super, super sharp and crispy every single time. I like that bit of softness to it. I don't know, I don't know if I'm good at explaining that. Shooting with a DSLR to me provides a more seamless experience because you don't have to wait for that digital screen to refresh or to load and sometimes it might lag on the mirrorless cameras. So to me, I prefer my experience shooting with a DSLR. Now the Sony camera, the Sony mirrorless, the eye autofocus technology on this is just incredible. The photos come out extremely sharp and clear every single time. I don't even have to focus. Like I don't even do anything. It literally just focuses on the eyes of the subject and that's it, I don't do anything. I don't choose the focus point. You know how sometimes on the iPhone you have to choose your focus point? This doesn't, you don't even have to do that. It literally focuses on the eyes of whoever you're shooting. And you could also customize it if you don't want that, but the eye autofocus is incredible. So I would say in terms of focus and sharpness, the mirrorless, at least with, with the Sony, is just incredible. DSLR, don't think you can't get clear pictures from this. You definitely can. This is my, one of my favorite cameras. I've been using it forever. You can still get clear pictures from this, but I'm gonna put a side by side so you can see. I took the same picture with the with these cameras and you can see the how just how crystal clear the, the mirrorless one is. It's incredible. Even though both of these cameras can take fast pictures, because the mirrorless cameras have simpler internal mechanics, remember they don't have that whole mirrorless system in here, it enables them to shoot faster than most DSLRs. Don't think if you get the DSLRs that it's gonna move at dinosaur speed. No, I, this is quick, it's quick. Like seriously, focusing and speed on this are still great. With this mirrorless, it does have the silent shutter, which is pretty awesome. When I am shooting with models though, I prefer to have a shutter on because it helps them pose, so. It's just a feature that is not available on my DSLR. I just thought I would throw that out there. Let's talk about battery life. DSLR wins for me, 100%.
the I could go days without charging my battery and I can do photo shoot after photo shoot. I don't even think about the battery on this camera. How about that? Mirrorless cameras, I'm constantly stressed about the battery life. They die so in my opinion, they just they just die quick like you, I was doing a photo shoot for 40 minutes and the battery went down 22%. Like I barely did anything. It was, that's like the beginning of the photo shoot. So it's a little concern. The battery life is concerning on the mirrorless cameras. Part of the reason why batteries drain quicker on mirrorless cameras is because they are completely electronic. I mean, we have things like the LCD screen and mostly the viewfinder, which again needs to refresh and needs to be powered. So we have a lot of electronic functions in the mirrorless cameras, which take up more battery. Now, the battery life on mirrorless cameras are constantly improving. It does make sense as to why it, it wouldn't be as long lasting as on DSLRs, because again, everything on the mirrorless is electronic. So it does need battery to power all of these things. Whereas on a DSLR, everything is optical and most things don't really require power. And when they do, it doesn't use very much the DSLRs have more accessories, more lenses, more everything. I mean, they've been out longer, so obviously they're gonna have more things for this. The mirrorless, like there are there are lenses to choose from. There's a lot of lenses, but not as much as you would have to choose from if you had a DSLR. But I feel like with time, you're literally gonna have all of the, that plus more with the mirrorless, because that's every all the camera companies are making new lenses, new accessories for this, so. It's only a matter of time in my opinion. But if you're if you're someone who wants all the, the accessories and all the lenses to choose from, DSLR would be your best bet. Mirrorless cameras are more likely to have a touch screen. So if you are someone who loves a touch screen and you wanna zoom in and everything, maybe you wanna go for a mirrorless. Although I will say there are some DSLRs that have a touch screen. This one actually has a touch screen, my Mark IV, which I love. So that's just something to think about, touch screen. With the DSLRs, they're still gonna be expensive, but you can definitely find them discounted. Again, there's gonna be price cuts because now everyone wants a mirrorless camera. So this actually might be a great time to invest in a DSLR. It just depends on which one you get. You can find a budget-friendly mirrorless, I'm sure. I'm sure they've created one by now. Personally, for me, I wait a year or two after a camera is released and then I purchase it so that I can get it at like a cheaper price. Because when they first come out, I mean, again, you're paying thousands of dollars. You're investing so much money into this gear. Uh, I just, again, use my gear as much as I can, and then I upgrade at the last moment possible. <laughs> also, mirrorless cameras are known to be better in video. I don't know too much about that, you guys. I'm sorry. Like, I wish I could talk about the video capabilities. I know that they're amazing on the mirrorless cameras, but I'm just a photographer. I don't have that much experience with the video capabilities in the mirrorless, even in the DSLR. So I'm just gonna be honest about that. Definitely look, look it up though, the video stuff on mirrorless. So I know it's great. So that's all I gotta say about that. I would also say just do some extra research too. I'm sure I forgot some stuff because there's a lot to know about these cameras. All right, so after all of that, the final question is, which is the better camera, I guess? Or like, should you switch? Should you buy this camera? Should you buy the DSLR? The, the question is, what type of photography are you gonna be doing? And what is important to you as a photographer? Those are the two questions I would ask you. Because if you're someone who wants maybe like a really good battery life, more selection in lenses and accessories, okay, and you still want that good quality, okay, and you don't wanna pay a lot. DSLR, it's right here, it's beautiful, I love it. I still use it. Or if you're someone who wants the newest gear, the best of the best on the market, and you want something that's gonna be quick, you want it to be efficient, you want that crispy, precise quality, mirrorless cameras, they're great, they're amazing. They're very practical for the everyday photographer, I would say. So you, you, again, you just have to think, what is important to me? Unfortunately, it's not something that I can answer for you guys. Like I would love to be like, okay, buy this or buy this. It's I would not tell someone which one to buy because it's it's tricky. It really depends on each person. But hopefully this video has helped give you some clarity on the differences between the two and helped you kind of narrow it down. What I would say too is don't buy into the hype. Don't just buy something because it's new, it's on the market. Just wait it out, research a bit, really know what you're investing your money into. 
don't just buy it because it's the newest thing because trust me they're releasing a new camera like every five days <laughs> okay I, I just can't keep up at this point anymore <laughs> i'm like oh another mirrorless i'm still on the i'm still on like the first uh camera i'm still using like iphone 2 <laughs>